The shortage that my colleague from Maryland mentioned is certainly true in, in Oregon. We're estimated about 110,000 units short. But in addition, we have the, the challenge that any developer wants to develop high-end housing because there's so many folks to the south of us in California in the San Francisco area where the, the dot-com boosted the value of houses, so you can sell your house for a million plus dollars, move to Oregon. So there's a ready supply of buyers for high end, and so a developer doesn't want to develop uh, normal family uh, housing when they can make more money building um, McMansions. The, I want to turn to a different part of the puzzle, though, and that is the involvement in hedge funds. Since 2009, when we had massive foreclosures, they were sold in bulks of a, of a thousand or more houses at a time. The only people who could buy them were hedge funds. Hedge funds discovered that this was a fabulous in, investment, both from appreciation, appreciation that would have gone to middle class families. Uh, I lobbied the Obama administration hard to make them available to families because they were being sold 50 cents on the dollar at the time. Uh, and they said it was just too complicated and they were worried about slowing a process where houses might be exposed to frozen pipes or vandals stripping copper or so forth. So, but the long, the long and short of it is the hedge funds became deeply invested in this market and they've continued to do so seeing how fabulously profitable uh, it is. Uh, they're buying now about a quarter of the houses uh, that are available, especially in the southern markets, places like Phoenix and, and Atlanta. But it's affecting states like Oregon as well. Uh, Ms. Bailey, um, uh, this uh, situation affects rents and, and the price of home ownership both. And people said, well, how does it affect the renters? And the, my basic understanding that I want clarification from you on is, uh, first of all, if an investor pays more for a house, they're going to charge higher rents, going to drive up the rental market in general. But also, if renters who have the income to buy a house can no longer buy a house because they're competing against a hedge fund, that means they don't move out of the rental housing, and that rental housing supply is going to remain shorter and therefore at a higher market price. Um, can you help us understand, are the hedge funds having an impact on the affordability of, of rents as well as home ownership? Yes, Senator. As you explained it, that's exactly right. We're really concerned about renters, especially higher income renters who are staying in the market um, longer than they would otherwise and therefore driving up the cost because 30% of their income is higher and so they can pay more. But we're also concerned for the renter themselves, not only paying more rent, but also for families, in particular families with kids. Single family housing is typically is one of the ways that is, is, is really important to them. It ha provides the size. It's often in, uh, in, in places uh, with better schools and, and other amenities that families with kids need. And so we really need to maintain an affordability in the single family rental market for, for, fam for low income families with yeah. kids. I really saw when I was director of Habitat for Humanity how an affordable mortgage or affordable rental housing was huge to the stability of family. And I saw kids whose lives improved enormously and, uh, when they had that stake in the community through an affordable, decent, decent home in a decent community. Uh, Ms. Ventura, your organization has helped tens of thousands of families enter home ownership through mortgage finance programs. And I'm like, tens of thousands, that's awesome. That is, that is, that is tremendous. Now, if the hedge funds are targeting if they were, and I don't know to what degree they are, start targeting Rhode Island and, and driving up the prices, how would that affect the opportunity of families to buy homes? Because then they're then competing against all cash, no inspection offers at a higher price point than, than the houses have been at shortly before. So, um, Senator, I haven't heard that um, hedge funds are buying properties in Rhode Island. It's possible. I think that single-family opportunities in Rhode Island, the opportunity to either lease a home or um, purchase a home is challenging. We're not building enough single-family inventory now. Um, you mentioned Habitat, and thank you for your work with Habitat. Our Habitat affiliates in Rhode Island do a terrific job providing just those opportunities, but we need to do more in our state in providing financing opportunities to develop that next level, leaving rental, home ownership, um, affordable home ownership, and the ability to build wealth. Hmm. Uh, uh, thank you. And I hope for your sake they don't start to target Rhode Island. 
Um, you can visit your colleagues in Atlanta and Phoenix to find out the, the impact, or in Oregon. Um, Ms. Bailey, several state legislatures, including Oregon, have considered creating a rental housing registry system to provide clear data on landlords and, and, and homes in the rental market to really understand the dynamics of that market better. Um, would the benefits outweigh the challenges in setting up this kind of registry system? Senator, it, it could. It could really help. Sometimes it's a black box when, uh, related to rent, renting and being able to locate uh, units for families. So it, putting in the resources that it would take to be able to, um, and making it as easy as possible for landlords to register, putting in the resources to maintain a system like that could play a significant role in helping families uh, find a place to live. Right now, we know that housing authorities and other housing agencies are having to use resources to uh, pay for realtors and others who, are who have to, in order to help people with low incomes, find rental units. Oftentimes, many of us have to do the same thing. Having such a, a registry could make a difference in just making it easier to access a, a rental house. Well, I'll just close out with a, a comment on, on the hedge fund uh, side. Uh, we have all our traditional programs, uh, for example, housing vouchers. I spent an afternoon calling in the uh, uh, west side of Portland trying to find an apartment uh, that would take a housing voucher, and all the rents were way above the housing voucher, so I didn't find one. And I just did that for kind of understand it personally. Uh, so we have to amplify all of those, those programs, but we also have this factor, this factor since 2009 that has become a competitor with ordinary American families for basic three-bedroom family, two- or three-bedroom family house. That is something we could do that could make a profound difference that doesn't cost the government a single dime, and then we should do it. We should get the hedge funds out of the housing business. Thanks.